worship the Lord tonight. Thank Him and bless Him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to let go and let God do what He wants to do with me. I'm going to let go and let God do what He wants to do with me. shook 
on a new cart and user was driving it and they was out of the plan because God didn't mean for no oxen to carry his presence. He meant for you and I to carry his spirit and to carry his power. Amen. And when that oxen shook, amen, Ahia reached out and used and grabbed a hold of the ark to hold it steady. And the Bible said they were smitten. They fell dead. Amen. And whenever they, now how many of you know they fell dead? But in our day, that ain't what that means. That ain't meaning people like you and me going to fall dead in church. But it's meaning there's something in us that's trying to quench your spirit and trying to control how God operates. And that's got to die. Hallelujah. That's got to go from us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I can tell you it could be something so uh, so complicated as issues you've had a long life and things that's happened to you that you allow to hinder you from coming into the fullness of His presence. But it can also be so minute and trite as you being a clock watcher or you being a, a one who's a stickler for order so much that you can't let Jesus have His way in a meeting. Can you say praise the Lord? Sometimes, you know, when you get a new everything, you think you got to have a new cart to tote the Spirit. And if you're not careful, you'll try to even make the anointing fit into your new arrangements. But God won't be put in a box tonight. He's found His dwelling place. Amen. And the Bible said they left at Obedeer's house. And when they sent messengers from Obedeer's house to David, and David said, that messenger said, oh, did I just come from there? <laughs> said, they blessed so much that everything they touch is prospering. Everything over there just looks wonderful. And David knew why. Because he had the presence of God. Oh, amen. And he went after it the second time. And this time he went right. He didn't carry oxen. And he didn't carry carts. He carried sons of God. He carried the Levites. He carried the priests of the Most High God. That ark was overlaid with solid gold. There was no way you could have carried it in the natural. It was too heavy. But they said when the Levites put their got in place, the Spirit of God would just lift up that ark. And all they had to do was walk in that vocation wherewith they were calling. You know it's that way tonight when you're in your calling and you abide in that calling. You don't have to struggle or strive or labor or work or sweat. But the Spirit of God just lifts that load right up off of your shoulders. And, and David let him carry it, but ever so often he says, Stop. Stop right there. What are you going to do? I'm going to praise the Lord a while. He offered up sacrifice. He offered glory to God. And by the time he hit the gate of the city, he could no longer contain himself. And he danced before the Lord with all of his might. And in the midst of his dancing, God anointed him to feed a piece of flesh, a piece of bread, and a flagon of wine to every one of the saints of God that were gathered at Jerusalem. He danced all over that street. And when he got home, he was dancing in his house to bless his house. He was going to put that same spirit on them. And Michael met him at the door and despised him in her heart because now you know why he got Michael don't you because he killed the Philistines amen and she rose that ain't a good way to get a bride when you kill <laughs> praise the Lord because he was killing off the mind he was killing off the carnality he was killing off them thoughts that's what Philistine means something that keeps rolling amen like thoughts roll over in your mind. And how many know that's your biggest enemy tonight is not the devil? Your biggest enemy is this thing between your ears that talks you out of obeying the Spirit of God. I don't know why I'm preaching this. I got you preaching in a minute, but I want you to hear that. He, she, she said, Did not the king of Israel. Ooh, ain't you ever met that? I mean, you just tore loose and showed up. God got all over you and you couldn't control yourself. 
Some of you fell in the floor and some of you shouting in the aisle. Some of you prophesied to your neighbor and you're just feeling about as high as heaven itself and you come home and meet Michael in the door. And Michael said, Boy, you sure look smart out there today. In front of the whole house of Israel and you the king showing yourself like that. You know what he said? He said, if you think today was something, just wait till I get back out there tomorrow. He said, this time, said, the day I dance, said, tomorrow I'm going to play before the Lord. That's what he said there. He said, I'm going to play before the Lord. He meant I'm going to add a little to it. I'm going to do double dancing. I'm going to do double shouting. Um, but you know what the Bible said? The Lord smote Michael's womb and she is buried till the day she died. Amen. Why? Because she would not allow the flow of this. You know what? I don't care how much you run, shout, hoop, and holler over here. There's got to be that same river flowing in you when you get home. Amen. Every day, I got to touch it. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Every day, I have to feel that witness, bearing witness with me. I have to, and it doesn't have to happen in a six-hour fasting and prayer service. I'm talking about just getting up and consciously being aware that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is working on the inside of you. And the whole time it's working regardless of what you feel on the surface. It's driving out doubt. It's driving out sickness. It's driving out, hallelujah, depression. It's driving out oppression. The anointing, I'm going to talk to you tonight about that. The anointing doesn't rest. It doesn't cease. It's a constant flow of the power of God. Whether your flesh is subdued to it or not, it's still at work on the inside of you. Whether you feel new lines or glory bumps or whether you don't feel anything but just a dry spell, there's still within you a deep river of God that is bubbling and filling the pools. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man who when passing through the valley of Baca make it in the well and the streams fill the pools Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's my God be encouraged tonight. Amen. I will not be a Michael. I will not be a Michael. I won't be a user. I won't be in Ohio, in Ohio trying to drive which way the Spirit moves. But I will be a vessel. Glory to God that He can pour His Spirit through me. Because if there ain't no outlet, there won't be no heaven until there's an outlet. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. That's free sermon. Tonight. Hallelujah. One more song. Get our spirits back. If that isn't love, let's sing that tonight. Be flat. Yes. Amen. He left the splendor of heaven. Hallelujah.
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Amen. If you'd be so kind as to prepare your offering tonight to bring to the Lord, I want to thank you for your precious giving to the work of God. We bless every one of you. And I promise you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. He'll restore it back to you, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Your mill barrel will not run dry. Your cruise of oil will not fail. As long as you've got something in his kingdom, he'll keep something in your pocket. Do you believe that tonight? God bless you in Jesus' name as you give tonight. Greater 
want to read to you this verse of Scripture that I'm sure we would have no trouble quoting tonight. And we're going to build off of that some things the Lord spoke to me uh, this evening uh, to say to you tonight. We had a good meeting this morning. We preached, hallelujah. We preached on the meeting in the air, amen. And, uh, and we had a good, good time in the Lord. And we was over there in that tabernacle talking about where the Lord said to Moses, I'll meet with you and commune with you between the two cherubims on the top of the mercy seat. And we found out that the reason we meet the Lord is because He's opened a new door and He wants to commune with us in a new way. Hallelujah. In a new dimension of His Spirit. How many is looking to go into a greater depth of Jesus tonight? How many know you have all of Him, but you may not have experienced all of Him yet? You still know there's ways that have passed finding out. And as the heavens are high above the earth, so are His ways. And we're not to just take that scripture and remain ignorant, but we're to say if His ways are higher, I want to be higher in the Spirit so that I can taste of these things. Amen. In the 10th chapter of Isaiah and the 27th verse, there's one verse tonight uh, to start off with. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. And that destroyed there means completely annihilated, done away with, so that it can, that same yoke can never come back upon you again. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean what many have made to mean the Christian walk, just a constant battle and a constant struggle and always going through hardship. But it means that there is a strength of God that has been poured out unto us tonight where it can be victory all the time. Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be living from one trial to the next, but there's an enjoying of Jesus that we have come to know that brings us out of that mindset of thinking that every time we turn around, there's something else to go through. You don't suffer for Him tonight. He's already done the suffering. Can you say praise the Lord? And His will is not that we have to suffer, but that we come to grips and terms with His finished work at Calvary and receive that He's conquered every foe. He's defeated every enemy. He's destroyed the yoke from off our necks. Now we got another scripture in Matthew 11 that Jesus, at that time Jesus lifted His voice and said, I thank the old Father that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them unto babes, for so it seemed good in thy sight. For no man knoweth the Father, save the Son. Neither no man knoweth the Son, save the Father. And he to whomsoever the Son shall reveal himself to. And the next verse, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Glory to God. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you shall find rest unto your souls. He was not talking to sinners. He was not talking to heathen people. He was talking to those who were burnt out on those systems of religion that had bound them up and, and, and persecuted them and enslaved them. And he said if you'll come to me you'll come under such a covering that that yoke can no longer remain on you that burden will no longer cumber you but that yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing and so I want to preach tonight just on that line there because of the anointing because of the anointing now let's look at one more scripture in the New Testament, in 1 John 2, 1 John 2 and verse 27. Well, hallelujah. I feel the Spirit moving in this place tonight. 1 
1 John 2, 27. Hallelujah. Everybody there say amen. amen. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. Abideth in you. Get that straight. Abideth means it's taken up permanent residence. It does not flit and flutter and leave and go. It's always there. Right. Well, glory. It abideth. I don't care what it feels like. It abideth. I don't care what it looks like. It abideth. I don't care what the doctor said. It abideth. I don't care what the finance loan seer says. It abideth. I don't care what all your family said. It abideth. I don't care what them preachers tell you. It abideth in you. You know, we grew up as kids under such condemnation. We really did. Always worried your spirit was going to leave you. Always worried the Holy Ghost was going to depart. Always. Is anybody bear witness with that? I mean, every time you turned around, you thought you better go get saved all over again. Because they taught it that the Spirit of God was like a dove and you could just scare him off or run him off or do away. How can you do away with God? I'm just telling you right now, folks. He, he, listen. Listen, I'm telling you, when I go to bed every night, I go through this long ceremony. Every night of my life. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my... In the first place, you got no business calling yourself a sinner. If you're born again, there ain't no such thing as sinners saved by grace. That's gone forever. Amen. And, and, and I'd pray. And I'd say that every night. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. Don't let me die and go to hell. Let me go and rest when Jesus comes. Take care of my soul, Lord Jesus, while I sleep tonight. I even thought the devil could come in the winter at night and steal what I had on the inside of me. Amen. That's the truth. And I prayed that fervently. And then it just got to be a habit like it did with some of you. And every night I'd just sleep and, you know, mumble it off in my sleep as I was drifting off. Oh, Lord Jesus, please forgive us. And one night I came home and I was so sleepy and I laid down in the bed and I was getting ready to mumble my repentance prayer and I said, Father, we thank thee for this food. Bless it and sanctify it to the nourishment of our bodies. And I got up and I sat straight up my bed. I said, you big devil you don't mean none of that. That just was a religious habit. I got in to do it. It didn't have no anointing in it. It didn't have no nothing. There was no delicacy to it. It was just the regular old normal menu and I found out one day that the Lord had some delicate treats he wanted to lay on my plate and it wasn't just going to be steak and gravy every night but sometimes he was going to slip in some wonderful new meal that I'd never tasted up before and open up the truth of God to me that I was not running a race to try to outrun the devil and get the prize, but Jesus had already won the prize and had given it freely unto me. And I learned that the anointing, I read this first and found out that first of all, the anointing abides. It abides. It abides. Never leaves me. Never forsakes me. It's with me always. Then I found out that it wasn't just some little thing, some little bunch of dust, or some little bit of something or other, that just, and you want to know something, there are thousands in the world tonight that are in love with Jesus, and they're living that life. I just described to you. Every time they turn around, they think they've offended the Holy Ghost because they've not been taught relationship. They've been taught religion. And when you're taught religion, there is no relationship. Right. But when you come into the understanding of what this anointing is, you know that everything that has happened to you, everything that has ever took place, wonderful for you, happened because of the anointing. Hallelujah. Because of the anointing. Now let me tell you, we're blessed people tonight because we know the anointing. 
We know when it comes up within us. We know that it does come upon us. We know that it manifests in our midst in mighty ways and, and, and it keeps us and it prospers us and it teaches us and it blesses us. It comes on everybody at any given moment. You can stir up the gifts of God that are on the inside of you. God don't have to come down here and get a hold of you because he's already in this room tonight because he's on the inside of every one of us. He ain't gone on a journey. I let all the prophets of Baal cut their cell, jump and scream, holler and cry, but God's man will stand over there and say, maybe you ought to cry a little louder. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's gone on a journey. Maybe he's asleep. But David said about our God, I'll lift up mine eyes under the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor does he sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. He said the sun shall not smite thee by day and the moon by night, but he shall preserve thy soul even forevermore upon thy right hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so, well, glory. <laughs> Amen. I feel good. Hallelujah. He said, where is your God? Call a little louder. Cry a little more. Holler a little more. Work it up a little more. And finally, they beat down the whole altar. And there was nothing left to that altar. And Elijah stepped up and rebuilt the altar. And cut the sacrifices to fit on the altar. Any king, you, anything you can't fit on the altar has got to go. Anything you can't fit on the altar has got to go. I don't care if it's a dream, a goal, a wish, a want to, or a have to. If it won't fit on that altar, it's got to be trimmed off. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Some of your friends tonight won't fit on that altar. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. They just don't want what you want. They're not after what you're after. And if you keep on, they're going to pull you down. So you got to throw everything on the altar, and if that part don't fit, cut it off. Cut it off. And these friends don't have to be a bunch of worldly people. They can be your best friend that sits with you on the church pew and still stop you from fulfilling what God's destiny is for your life because they're so jealous of you. They're afraid you're going to get more than they have. And it's the same anointing. Glory to God. That abides in every one of us. There's no such thing as me having more Holy Ghost than any one of you. And there's no such thing as you having more than me. There ain't but one. And if you've got him, you've got him tonight. You don't have a piece of it or a portion of it. you got him. you got all fruit. You've got all nine gifts. You've got the ability of God, the life of God, the nature of God, the glory of God, the word of God, the peace of God. God, the love of God. If you've got Him, you've got it all. Amen. And you say amen. amen. When all was said and done, He got everything cut to fit. When He cut it to fit, He just prayed His prayer. And the Bible said, He told him, pour water on him, sacrifice. Pour water on him. Make it impossible. With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Wet it down. Wet it down. He did like Gideon, didn't he? He made a fleece. Gideon did. He said, let the let the wool be dry and let the ground be wet. And then the next day he said, Lord, if I may, but one more time. Glory to God. Give a confirmation on this thing. He said, this time, let the fleece be wet and let the ground be dry. And how many know it was the way he asked God to do it every time? Why? Because he was anointed to do what he was doing. And when you're anointed to do what you're doing, God always confirms it with signs and wonders and miracles. And he blesses and prospers what you're doing. We build it and then ask God to bless it. But if we find out what God was blessing and that we wouldn't have to beg him to bless it. He would already be there when the time came for the arrival of the saints of God to that particular era and time and place. Hallelujah. Be better than you sitting under a million dollar mortgage. 
overtaxing God's people and having to prostitute the gospel to pay for the thing. It'd be better for you to wait and see what is God in the mood for? What is God calling for? Oh, to God, I feel this tonight. Amen. And so the Bible said when he prayed his prayer, that old water didn't stay on there long because the fire of God came forth and licked up that water, even that that was in the trenches around it. Amen. And burn up that sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, one other reason we're such a blessed people and I just go, we can feel God any time we want to. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, used to, they'd get one poor old saint in the yard and about eight or ten around yeah. and they'd rock them for an hour. Yeah. How many members in them yeah. Rock them. Boy, we went to some churches that they're preaching. You was going down. Or they was going to take you to the back door. Now they didn't have enough power to knock you down when they touched you. But they would rock you till you got dizzy enough to go on down. Amen. Take you to the back door they would. Go through the doors. Amen. There's always after the devil. He had more power than Jesus did. Every time they got together there was something discerning. I would tell you, if you come here to discern me, did not just help yourself, but I hadn't got time to stand still for you to practice your fortune telling on me. I didn't come to discern devils. I come to discern the Spirit of God in this house tonight and the Holy Ghost in this house. Can you say amen? That discerning the spirits is not for you to detect demons and devils everywhere you go, but it's for you to walk in here and realize that among the body of Christ, there is a flow of God and an anointing and a spirit in every one of us that bears witness that we are children of God and that children we're heirs, heirs of God and join in with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Wouldn't have thought everybody was on the lookout for the Holy Ghost to take off here tonight and see a move of God manifested. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I discern the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. I discern the Word of God is in this house tonight. I discern the saints of God are in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you discern? I haven't found a demon yet tonight. Amen. I haven't found a devil yet. Because in my mind, he's defeated. He has no power. And I will not drag up that which Christ has put under his feet and resurrect him and give him life again in my world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. My God, I believe I'll run a while. I discern the Holy Ghost. I discern the anointing of God. Woo. Hallelujah. I discern a spirit of worship. I discern a spirit of praise. I discern a spirit of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they used to they used to rock you and you kind of almost had to get in this daze. Now don't get mad at me what I'm facing to say. But that ain't no Holy Ghost. That's not the anointing. That's religious rituals and routines. And you might as well be dancing around a campfire somewhere. And you can rock out a lot of them. That's the truth. All them people that hollers witchcraft, that's what they practice in church. They do all their rituals and almost get in a daze. And then somebody finally, finally gets shook enough that when they turn them loose, they won't quit shaking. And they'll say, oh, didn't the Lord move it? No. He didn't move. Them people shook you and you moved because they shook you. <laughs> if the Holy Ghost shakes anybody in here, it won't be because the people are standing around them rocking them. It'll be because the power of God fell on them and they ain't glory to go. Don't get me wrong. You will shake. You will quake. You might jerk. You might holler. You might laugh. You might cry. You might stammer lips. You might speak in tongues. You might fall. You might shout. I don't deny the manifestations of the Spirit of God. We see them quite frequently. But I will deny that no man can conjure up anything as precious, as holy, and as wonderful as the anointing of God that destroys the yoke and lifts the burdens. 
Don't get mad at me now. You can't conjure it up with bright lights, fog machines, fancy youth programs, and nothing wrong with all them things. But if that's taking the place of the true current of God flowing in a meeting, then I'm telling you, that ain't nothing but for glam and for gore and for money and for fame and everything else. But there's a genuine, divine unction of God on the inside of you. And you don't need a, a replica. And you don't need anything to copy it. It's original. It's the life of God on the inside of you. And if you yield to that, it will you come forth and you will shine in his image and likeness. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Woo. We no longer we no longer live in that right. You know we can feel God any time we want to by yielding to the Spirit. Doesn't take an hour to feel his presence. Doesn't take an hour to get in the Spirit. You don't have to open every service rebuking Satan. Nor do you need to invite Jesus in as if he's standing outside wondering, can he come in or not? He's in here because I'm in here and you're in here. Can you say praise the Lord? You have to change. So many things have to go that are contradictory to the word of God. Right down to the little songs we sing. If they don't match the word, and sometimes you'll slip up and sing one. And boy, I did that last Sunday. And when I got to the dinner table, I said, we won't be singing that song no more because that poor person pitiful verse we sung. I'm not striving. I'm not alone. And I'm not trying. I'm not sore. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to sing that song no more because that verse is totally contrary to what I believe in the Word of God. I am blessed. I am healed. I am whole. I'm alive. Hallelujah. I'm the head and not the tail. Glory to God. Amen. In the Old Testament days, though, you must understand, they didn't know what it is to experience what you are right now. They did not come together in an assembly and feel God on them like you're feeling Him move on you right now. They were only dictated to by those who felt Him. There was three offices that held the anointing. Priests, prophets, and kings. The priest was anointed to intercede for the people. The prophet was anointed to speak for God. The king was anointed to rule as a king to bring governmental jurisdiction and to keep in order the, the people of God in the earth. Amen. Every one of them are types and shadows of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is all three. He's a high priest. He's a king. And he is a prophet. And you say, praise the Lord. Now then, I'll bring that even to your pew tonight and promise you that you have the anointing of a priest. You can be an intercessor who will glory any time you need to. You can step right between one of your brothers or sisters and their problem and bear it on your shoulder and cry out to God in their behalf and lift that load right off of them. You're anointed to be a priest. But don't sell yourself short. You're not just a priest. You're a king in the kingdom of God tonight. He's anointed us to be kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign in this earth. Is that what the Bible says? Glory be to God. You have authority. You have power. You have dominion. You have jurisdiction. You have the badge. You wear the garments. You're chosen of God for this hour. You don't have to lay down and accept anything that's contrary to the nature of God but you have the ability with your your tongue to speak for the authority of God and turn worlds around. Hallelujah. But you're not just a king, you're a prophet. Now, I can hear some of you there saying, brother, that's going too far. I don't prophesy. Sure you do. When you get up in your house and start speaking to the elements around you. When you begin to say sickness, Get out of my baby's room. Get out of my husband's body. Get out of my wife's body. Oh, praise the Lord. When you begin to say, I'm not going to walk in poverty no more. I'm going to prosper and be in hell. Even if you know what you're doing, prophesy. You're anointed to prophesy. H. Richard Hall said, when nobody else could help him, he'd go get in the mirror. Come on. And point his finger in that mirror. And say, God's moving for you right now, brother. You're coming out of this. Oh, yes. 
You're anointed in all three measures. And you say, praise the Lord. Amen. But the highest form of anointing, of course, in the Old Testament, was the holy anointing oil. That's how they recognized the anointing. They, the Lord told Moses in Exodus, the 30th chapter. Let's read that real fast. Exodus chapter 30, verse 22. Are you getting blessed tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Exodus chapter 30 and verse 22. Blessed be his holy name. This is what the Bible says that the Lord told Moses to do to bring in that tangible uh, substance so that it could be uh, used to separate, consecrate, make something stand out as holy unto the Lord. Do you believe that's what the anointing does for you tonight? It sanctifies you. It sets you apart and says those are holy children of God. Amen. Don't get me mad. You don't, or don't get me mad. Don't get you mad. You're not holy because of what you do or you don't do. You're holy because the anointing of God yeah. is upon yeah. your life. Yeah. You're not holy because you do or don't go certain places. And I'm not saying nothing about that because I do and don't go certain places myself. But that makes that's not what makes me born again and that's not what makes me holy. Yeah. I'm not holy because of what I do in the natural. I'm holy because I carry the Spirit of the living God on the inside of me. If you ever think you're holy because of what you do or don't do, then you're self-righteous. Which means you're clothed with filthy rags. Which means everywhere you go, you stink. People don't want to be around you. That's probably because most self-righteous people can't keep it to their self. Amen. <laughs> Can they do it? They're always bragging about what they do and don't do. Amen. That all stops when the preacher preaches on things like gospel and backbiting and tailbearing. Then they get really get. They show how holy they are. They get holy anger comes all over their faces. Amen. And they blow up. They want to crucify the preacher. Amen. But how many of you know I'm holy because I'm sanctified by the oil of His Spirit. The anointing of God lives in my house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to these verses. In verse 22 it says, And moreover the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also principal spices of pure myrrh and sweet cinnamon. And let's see. I'm not, I know the amounts are there, but that's not what's important. Now, sweet calamus, uh, cassia, and, and said, take all of that and then of olive oil a uh, hen or one measure. Hallelujah. And thou shalt make it a oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. Amen. Now, first of all, listen to me. He did not tell them that oil was going to fall on them. He told them they had to make it. They had to produce it. They, glory to God. So I want you to see tonight that the anointing of God is not just some bit of dust or magic that falls on you, but you, by praising and worshiping and yielding to God, you produce that fragrance in the house of God. Somebody say amen. amen. He said make it. Everybody say make it. make it. Chris sings that song, leads us in it sometimes. We create anointing in this place. We are to create that oil by the anointing we have on the inside of us. Can you say, isn't that a beautiful thought? God does not, I'm not to leave it up to heaven. I'm not going to leave it up to Jesus. He's already left me with the ability. Boy, that's a, that's a chance light on the matter, don't it? Make one. Everybody say it again. Make it. Make it. Make it. Get in this house and make it smell good. Get in this house. Get 
in this house and release what God's put right. in you. Get in this house and yield to that spirit on the inside of you. Somebody say praise the Lord. There ain't no preacher going to bring you revival in a suitcase. Brother, you're going to have to stir up that that is within you and you will make it flow. Hallelujah. You'll make it flow. And then he said, make it how? Compounded. Compounded. You know what that means? Crush it. Pulverize it. Beat it. Powder it. Well, glory. That, that's, <laughs> that's why some of you smell so good tonight. You've been pulverized. Hello. You've been beaten. You've been pounded out. Glory be to God. And it weren't done by the beater and the pounder for you to come forth as gold and be anointed. It was done for destruction. But the Bible said it destructs it in famine. Thou shalt laugh. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Here's the truth about it. You should have died, you didn't. You should have glory. You should have failed, you didn't. You should have quit and you didn't. You should have run and you didn't. And because you did, you hung around because as soon as all the tasting, you've got to understand, I'm skipping a lot of stuff tonight. Every one of those words means a, a particular thing. Murder means suffering. Uh, Casey, calamus, that sentiment means resurrection. Standing upright. All those words mean something. They're all stages of our walk in Christ. Can you receive that tonight? We've walked through the myrrh walk. We've walked through the acacia walk. We've walked through that sweet smelling calamus. We've had that sweetness of resurrection come into us Amen. when we thought we were beaten and left for dead and Christ stood us up on our... Yeah. See, all these things are intricate parts of making a man of God. Somebody say praise the Lord. <laughs> But if you will stand through the compounding process, and you know when you start, it's after the order of the apothecary, the perfumers, the medicine man, what it means also in the Hebrew, one who has the ability to cure, to heal. Amen? Amen. And he comes in and the pulverizer starts, you look over and say, what a combination. Because they each have their distinct odor. Myrrh smells like myrrh. Calamus smells like calamus. Cassia smells like cassia. Hello, church. There's five principal spices of the corporate body anointing. Isn't that a good number? See, it is. It's not only the grace number, but it's the number of the fivefold ministry. The hand of God bringing order and government to his people so they'll grow up into him. Glory to God, who is the head of all things, that we may be perfected. Somebody say praise the Lord. Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Five principal spices. And calamus is still calamus, and case is still case, and even though it's powder, you can go over and distinguish by the texture, the color, and the aroma. Which one is which? But that can't remain that way because we be a many or one body. We be a many or one bread. By one spirit are we all baptized into one body. It's not fair for the, ever somebody to have his own identity when there is but one identity, and that's the Christ identity. Because if, if, if so, there will be warrings and strifes and struggles and what have you. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to put all five fingers on the same hand. The apostle's the thumb. He's the stability. He's the one sent with a message. Glory to God. He's sent with a word from God for you. Right. The, the, the uh, uh, apostle and the prophet, that finger that points you into the greater things of God. He prophesies a world to you and then you walk out into that world. He's a prophet. The evangelist, the longest finger. He can reach beyond the realms of these four walls and touch those that are about. The pastor, this finger, the ring finger, he's married to the church. He will not use her or abuse her and he ain't a wife beater. Amen. If he is, you better get rid of him. Somebody say amen. 
Ain't no preacher or to be a wife beater and use his wife to get game for himself. I mean, it's got me. one, one time, my wife, and this is probably good to stay on that camera, but my wife and I were talking to somebody and they had had a, they, they well, anyway, they had had, I'm trying to be uh, discreet for this story, but they had had a uh, situation, probably, we've all got them in a situation. And uh, anyway, the Lord had given a dream and they had a church. And in that dream, uh, the one that was pastor saw her wedding ring destroyed off of her finger. And not too long after, they, they took a leap. And they were telling me about this dream. And I said, well, that is clear as a bell. The Lord released you. From the pastor is married to the church, the Lord released you to go on. Well, uh, anyway... I don't know if it was received or not, but I gave it. Amen. And, but now the last finger is the teacher. And that's the only one on your hand you can get in your ear. <laughs> and so these saints, that the only time they think God's moving is when a thousand people swinging from the chandeliers and everybody's kicking up their heel. And when it's teaching time and time to learn the Word of God, you can't even get a crowd to show up. Guess what? They're incomplete and they're imperfect and they're immature. You are immature without all offices of that ministry and that ain't in rank and order. There is no rank in the kingdom and it don't mean one man can only have one of those operations. Some men have all five of them at work in their life and some women too. Amen. Women can fulfill all five offices. Oh, they'll say, well, they ought not to do this one. Well, you just let me tell you. If it hadn't been for some women stepping in where them men ought to have been in doing what they ought to have done, the whole work would have went under. But God anointed their wives and raised them up instead. Praise the Lord. Well, glory. Five principal spices. And they all make up that anointing of God. Amen. Amen. And but whenever the, the, get back to my thought now, you see all these distinctions, you can count them, you can smell each one of them smells different. But when the apothecary uh, worker comes in and takes that hen, H I N, that measure of olive oil, and pours it in to the five spices, it becomes one fragrance, one oil, one life. One body, one spirit. Oh, praise His holy name. And that hand of oil, haven't you figured it out? That's Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. My Lord and my God. Amen. Amen. And then the Lord told Moses these things. That you cannot compound anything like it. There ain't but one. And you and I both know we go in meetings and it ain't there. Now look, I'm not being negative. I guess I am. <laughs> but you need two posts to crack your car tonight. Amen. The positive and the negative. I'll give you the good negative, the true negative. They try to make you think it's there. They do everything they can to even convince themselves it's there. And it ain't there. That's right. yeah. Yeah. It's dry as a shovel. Watch the Bible say twice dead and plucked up by the roots. I mean, you can't even scrounge, scrounge up a hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it's right. And, and, and of course, now then, there's so many fillers that you can go to a church and never hear the word preached. Never hear the word preached. Them people are saying for two hours and won't listen to five minutes to preach. I'm preaching that your side now. They'll keep you on your feet till you fall out for a song, a worship session that is not worship. It's entertainment. Ain't nobody lost in God. They all waiting on the next beat to know which hip to swing what way. Closet will have a nice round clean, clean out the box.
phone and put it back in. They just listening to know what time to head out or what time to go see their friend across the building. I love, I love that God's blessed many people with large churches, but if all you're using one for is to hide out in a corner somewhere, then you need to come home and get somewhere where you can be responsible for your worship unto the Lord. Can you say amen? Well, glory. That's ugly, isn't it? But it's the truth. They got all this mechanics. We went to hear, uh, what's that brother we go to hear, brother? That brother Shuttlesworth. I don't want you to think, but I don't really care because I really enjoy his preaching. He's got a good gift of the Spirit that operates through but anyway, I love him because he reminds me of Brother Schembach so much. Yeah. And anyway, we went over to hear him. And, and I'm telling you, he had a good meeting. But when we first got there, we was trying to find a seat to sit on. And about the time I thought we found a row we could sit, they cut every light in that church off. I mean, it got so dark you couldn't see your hand there. They were there. It's the truth. They shut every light down. Amen. I thought, what the God's hell are they doing in here? Well, let's get ready for worship. My God, folks, that ain't going to enhance the glory or the anointing. All that is is so that people will say, yeah, we like to go over there. They're up to the time zone. And I tell you what, you may not get no dark room around here to gyrate around in, but if you'll hang around long enough, the Holy Ghost will get a hold of your heart and you'll feel the real anointing of God move in your soul. Now, don't mark me as old-fashioned because if you come back and hear me some more, I, there's a lot of things and I'm way ahead of the rest of them all. But I want you to know that there ain't no gimmicks. You can't compound anything like it. There ain't nothing any more beautiful, sweet, glorious, precious, life-giving than for you to know you are chosen of God. Hey, glory to God. I'm talking about Sunday of Ohio and to have the real spirit of God move and, and pulsate through your veins and let you know that you're a child of the King. Hallelujah. So don't compound anything like it. Then it said, don't put it on a stranger's flesh or a man's flesh. Look, it ain't the flesh that's getting anointed. That's just the results of what's taking place on the inside of you. That anointing doesn't come from the outside in. Glory to God. It flows from the inside out. I know because I feel it flowing from the inside out of me right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It flows from the inside out. Uh, you don't get born again because something falls on you. You get born again from the inside out. You don't get the Holy Ghost because they beat you enough in the head. No, you get the Holy Ghost because He's in the inside of you and Jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living. Amen. Let me close and find a landing pad for this. I'm going to get real fast here, so stay with me. Amen. King David is one of our highest examples of experience in the anointing. He was anointed three times in his lifetime. The first time he was anointed in 1 Samuel the 16th chapter after God had rejected Saul who was the flesh and had sought him out a man after his own heart. The Lord said to Samuel the prophet in 1 Samuel 16, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I've rejected him? Fill your horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I've chosen one of his sons to be king in Saul's stead. And Samuel, after six months of mourning, never had surface for six months, was down in his spirit because he, there was no king. He felt like he failed God. Now God was speaking to him with a new message for a new day. Saul was never anointed with a horn. He was anointed with a vial. A vial is man-made, but you got to kill a male lamb to get a horn and Jesus is a male lamb, amen. And because he died, his anointing has been willed unto every one of us and has come upon us. Samuel took his horn, went to the house of Jesse. All of Jesse's sons passed before him. Samuel thought, surely the Lord's anointing is before me. God said, you're looking on the outward appearance and I look on the heart. And so after every son had passed through and been rejected, Samuel said to Jesse, have you not any other son? Jesse said, oh, I've got David. He's ruddy. 
He's a youth. He's a lad. He's down there with a the sheep. He can't even take a bath. He does him. Sheep won't follow him no more. He's down there and he, we keep him downwind of us. But said, yeah, we'll bring him up. And they brought him up and the Lord said, rise, Samuel, and pour the oil upon him for surely my anointed does stand before they get a picture, learn a quick lesson. Whether you like them or not, God will anoint them. Whether you chose them or not, God will anoint them. Whether you approve or not, God will anoint them. Amen. They may be little, may be too young, may be too ready, too poor, may stink, may not be like you, but God will turn his horn upside down and pour into their life his anointing. Amen. Second time when Saul was chasing David, trying to kill him, David was hid in the cave of Adullam. Everybody oppressed, distressed, sore, sick, poor, and miserable came to David and gathered in that cave. And David finally said, Go with my mother and father, watch out for them, mom and dad, protect them until I can get through this mess. And about that time, Gad the seer showed up at the cave of Adullam and said, David, abide here no more, but get thee to Judah. And when David got to Judah, he he didn't know what he would find. Would he find more war? Would he find more sorrow? Would he find more death? But instead, he found the elders of the city waiting on him with a pile of oil and they poured it out and said, the Lord hath anointed thee king over us. That was the second anointing. Third time when David was 30 years old. Hallelujah. The people came and said, David, Saul no longer rules over us. You, you come. You come and they anointed him the third time. And he then took the stronghold of Zion and sat on the throne forever as our heavenly David. The Lord Jesus Christ is likened unto that heavenly David whose lineage will not fail, whose seed remaineth forever, and whose kingdom shall not pass away. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David said, thou anointest my head with oil so that my cup running over. In Psalm 92, 10, he said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil, and my horn shall thou exalt like that of a unicorn. In Psalm 133, he said, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that ran upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and on to the skirts of his garment. Prepare the Lord have commanded his blessing as the dew that is upon Herman and Zion, even life forevermore. Hallelujah. Life forevermore. Esther lay for six months in sweet smelling myrrh and sweet smelling spices. One whole year she did nothing but soak in the glory. When she came forth, everybody in that palace could smell her coming. She smelled like the Lord. She smelled of the Holy Ghost. She smelled of the anointing of God. And you know what happened to her? She got the scepter and half the kingdom. So I would encourage you to do some laying in the sweet odors of heaven. Get in the presence of God. Little sisters, wash him dishes in the Holy Ghost. Little brothers, Cut that grass in the Holy Ghost. Hello, church. If you're driving to work, praise Him. If you're riding in the car, love Him. Whatever, redeem every minute you can. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. And learn to worship Him without ever saying a word. Learn to love him without ever making a scene. Learn to love on him when turmoil is all around you. Learn that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow yeah. of the Almighty. Hallelujah. The ball down message is this. The word Christ means the anointed one. And the anointed. Jesus had an anointing. It was the anointing. Not a anointing, it was the anointing. Amen. Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. Covered the sight of the blind. Delivered into them that are bruised. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. 
Everybody say this. Jesus is the anointing. Hallelujah. He's the person of the anointing. He's the person of the Word. He's the person of the Spirit. He's the person. You want to put a face with the Holy Ghost? It has to be Jesus. He's the express image. He's full of grace and truth. He's the Holy Ghost outpoured. He's the baptizer. He's the gift giver. He's the fire starter. He's the fire. He's the wood. He's the sacrifice. He's all of it, you see. And tonight I say to you that God, His greatest desire in this moment right now is that you know what it is you've been filled with on the inside of you. Not just a few chill bumps that get on you when somebody sings the right line of a song. But every day of your life, you have access to the heavenly prize that has been given on the inside of you. And you must forget that which is behind you, reach to that which is before you, and press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen tonight? Well, glory. Amen. I don't know if I've helped you or not, but I preach me happy. Amen. Oh, yes. One day I got tired of going weeks without feeding him. Amen. I learned how to tap in to that flow. It's flowing all the time. He don't just cut it on once in a while. It's always on. You just have to tune into it. Now let me tell you one of the greatest uh, assets you'll have. The Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues. And if you got hang-ups about when and where and how you can talk in tongues. I, I cast him out of you in Jesus' name. I'll do, I'll do better than cast the devil out of anybody. I'll cast that foolishness you don't need in your life out of you. One thing is you can't be thinking that the Holy Ghost can only speak through you every six months, every six weeks, every once in a while. No, 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 no. God ain't no, he ain't no gift stealer. He's a gift giver. He gave you that gift. That's your gift. And anytime you feel that up, let me tell you something. God ain't going to open your mouth and talk in tongues for you. you. He will give you the utterance, but you will have to open your mouth. Yeah, that's right. I went to pray for people to receive that gift of tongues and how do you think you'll get the Holy Ghost? You don't even know. Either that or they got three three pieces of bubble gum chewing it. They can't get the Holy Ghost to that chewing gum. Or you'll get some smack and a grin every time the Spirit moves on them. Ain't nothing wrong with chewing gum. I chew it myself sometimes, but the time for it ain't when you try to get the Holy Ghost in the altar. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Praise the Lord. There's people that will live and die on this earth and never, never have the Holy Ghost. Speak a syllable through them. You know why? Because they just cannot get over the fact of how simple it is to have that experience with God. They've got it in their head how it's got to be, and they can't let go of that. But friend, if you can let go of all of that, if you can get rid of traditional teaching, if you can get it out of you that the Holy Ghost is not some... Uh, you know, gyro GB thing that happens to you and you got to really, really, really be snowed under to have that experience. No, I can say in my living room, lift my hands to the Lord, yield myself to God and pray and speak in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Amen. Oh, glory. Let's stand tonight and love on Him. Hallelujah. 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 Well, the Word says I'm anointed, so I am. Oh, the Word says I'm anointed, so I am. I've got that burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God in my life. Oh, the Word says I'm anointed, so I am. Oh, the Word says I'm anointed, so I am. The Word says I'm anointed, so I am. I've got that burden removing, you're destroying, power of God in my life. Oh, the Word says I'm anointed, so I am.
destroyed the power of God in my life. Word says I'm anointed, so I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want everybody, everybody, to go down this side and pass through here and let me lay hands on you. Bless you before you go home. I want to stir up. I want to stir it up in you. I want to release God in you. I want to bless you in his wonderful name. I want you to feel this that I feel tonight. Hallelujah. I believe that just what I read is an opening scripture tonight. The yoke shall be destroyed the cause of the anointing of God. You release yourself to God. Don't be thinking about nothing. I don't care if your house is about to turn upside down at home. I want you to don't think about nothing but about what you've got inside of you tonight, that anointing. And we're going to release God's best in and on you tonight in Jesus'
prophesy again because this is a brand new day. And especially because you're coming in this new year. I'm going to tell you something. You, this last year won't even hold a shadow to what this year will bring. There was a pile of obstacles. I mean a bunch of hurdles. Struggles, trials, offenses, defenses on every hand. And, and I'm telling you now, rejection and everything else, that's wiping off. You starting, it ain't just a new year on the calendar. It's a new year in the Holy Ghost for the both of you. Amen. I'm talking finances, everything. It's a new year, but it's a new day. It's a new anointing. It's a stronger measure than that you've walked in. Amen. Stronger than you've ever experienced because God has seen you hold your confession and hold on to His Word and know that somehow you're going to make it and you have made it. But you're going to do more than just make it now. You're going to thrive. You're going to thrive, says the Lord. You're going to... Oh, hallelujah. I'm coming to my Jesus, Jesus, I release the anointing. I release the anointing. I release the anointing. I release it all over him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, miracles, signs, and wonders, miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of the Lord. Hey, I'll call him my son in the higher. I'm going to tell all 
you something, I'm talking strong now, but I want y'all to quit going up there and listen to them idiots tell you that you're going to die and you're going to get sicker and you're going to get worse and you ain't going to get no better. I'm tired of that. You quit going. If you can't find one that says you're going to live and not die, you just get a hold of the Lord and believe him. Hallelujah. Nobody prophesying to me but the Holy Ghost. And I sure don't want nobody telling me what I can't do when I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Call him what he is. <laughs> Lord, he's a son of God. Eh? He's born of you and your sons of God. He's a son of God. He don't come forth like you be a glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Besides that, the Lord done let me know through this meeting tonight he feels the Holy Ghost. He feels the Holy Ghost. He responds to the Holy Ghost wonderfully. And you watch it. He's chosen. Some of this ain't got nothing to do with what they've told y'all it is. He's chosen of God. And people that's chosen of God's got their own way, I can tell you. Let me tell you what. I don't know why I'm saying all this. When I was a kid, they made mother do some of the stupidest things you ever seen. I was in and out. They wanted to run this. They wanted one time. Finally, for us all over with, I was laid up there in that clink with enough wires hooked to me. I, she had to keep me up all night long, take me in there. They hooked everything to me. They could have hooked, hooked to me. Finally, they all decided to quit hunting anything. Come on. Yeah. All it was because I thought on other things besides what was going on in the moment. That's what I said. <laughs>
I had to move. Hey, man. Glory. Glory. It gets strong like that. If you don't move, you'll be the one on the floor. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. <laughs> well, Lord, bless his name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. say something to you that is not pre not pre knowledge to them for knowledge. It gives you the gift of faith to believe for the impossible. Amen. Hey, when I was an evangelist, when I traveled all the time, I never went in a service before it uh, began. If I went in, I waited till the music just had started to slip in because if I was going to be used that way, I would. I can't know nothing, you know. I can prophesy to you all, and these people will receive it. I believe you'll receive what I prophesy, but I tell you what, the Holy Ghost can get down in the details and really show things. My God, aren't the gifts wonderful? I know we're not supposed to worship them, but I sure thank God for them. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't know where we've been to have it in back two or three times tonight. God, mighty, mighty, mighty. Well, it's just getting better all the time. So you don't want to miss anything coming up because you never know what's going to tear loose around here. Glory. Amen. And uh, how many of you uh, that brought things and put on the altar Wednesday, we were, how many of you have seen the Lord starting to change some things that you didn't see. The Lord's starting to work already. He's changing things. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Wednesday night, 7.30. Until then, may you have a wonderful, wonderful week in Jesus. And we'll see you back here then, 7.30. God bless.
Christ. Hallelujah.